Hello and welcome back to the general chemistry course of the Knowledge Catalog. Hi, this is Chemistry 9 and we are now on learning competency number 8, recognize the general classes and uses of organic compounds. Um, this uh, video is going to be, uh, you know, a very thorough discussion of uh, the following parts, a discussion on properties of organic compounds, activity 3, the harder carbons, and then activity 5, alcohol and their uses. So if you want to follow through with some sort of a reading material, you can open your learner's module on Unit 2, Module 3, pages 45 to 54. Let's begin. So for the first part is, uh, yeah, it's a discussion about the properties of organic compounds. And I would like you to look at this illustration and this GIF. Okay, so um, it's obviously uh, the fire that comes out of your stove, or the usual one. <laughs> And it is uh, sourced from liquefied petroleum gas. Among the properties of organic compounds is odor. Odor. Or odor. Yeah. <laughs> it is the smell of the compound. So, um, liquefied petroleum gas is known to be odorless. So, wala talaga siya supposedly smell. Pero merong ina-add sa kanya para maamoy natin siya in case nag-leak. That's actually a trivia that uh, most of us know already because as we know, um, liquefied petroleum gas is commonly used in ho as household fuel for cooking. And, uh, you know, um, it's also dangerous if we just leave it like... Uh, open. So usually kapag ano, kapag nasa bahay, sinasara talaga yung tanke right after magluto para uh, walang risk of leakage. Kasi napaka ano, napaka dali niyang uh, mag-catch ng fire. Okay, so next one is viscosity. It's the measure of a liquid's resistance to flow. Okay, so um, there are, you know, there are uh, organic compounds that are uh, liquid and uh, one of their properties is viscosity. Um, we may say that the uh, uh, the do liquids, okay, liquids lang ba ang may ganyan? Actually, even gases. That's why our collective term for uh, for liquids and gases that have the ability to flow is fluid. So yeah, viscosity is also known as the measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. So we can refer to liquid and gases. The next property is volatility. It is the measure of the, de or of the tendency of a compound to evaporate. If a vo if um, viscosity is the uh, tendency of uh, it is the uh, tendency of a material to resist flow. Volatility in mind is the tendency of a material of a compound to evaporate to turn from uh, liquid state to gaseous states. And um, ethyl ethyl alcohol is uh, at room temperature supposed to be liquid when kept inside the bottle, but at room temperature it can also evaporate because it absorbs kinetic energy from the surroundings, making it turn from uh, liquid to gas. And so, some, uh, no, uh, there are organic compounds that are more volatile than others. So, yeah, some organic compounds tend to evaporate uh, faster than others. The next and last, if I'm not mistaken, uh, property of organic compound that we are going to talk about is flammability. It is the ability of a uh, of, uh, material to catch fire easily. So most organic compounds are known to be flammable, such as acet such as acetone, um, ethyl alcohol, methyl alcohol. Yeah. So that's it for the properties of organic compounds. Simply the discussion lang yun. Okay, you just need to remember those. Um, remember that this uh, video is intended for grade nine students in the Philippines, and uh, that is the reason why uh, this is such a very simplified discussion about the properties of organic compounds. And I know that there are more to that, but again, the learning competency only requires uh, these students, grade nine, you, grade nine student to uh, just uh, remember those simple properties of organic compounds. Let us now move to activity number three, the hydrocarbons. So, uh, the objectives of this, uh, of this activity are the following. First is to recognize common kinds of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes and their uses. Second objective is to identify the types of bonds formed in alke alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And then the third objective is to relate the structures of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes to their properties. You need, you will need a paper and a pencil for this activity. Okay, so I would like to observe the following alkanes from methane to octane. So the phases, it means uh, what kind of phase do they have at room temperature or normally. 
inside the bottle. So methane is gaseous, ethane, propane, and butane are all gaseous. Pentane to octane are liquid. This is also their condensed structural formula. We are not showing here. Um, you know, we are not con we are not uh, really showing here the molecular and the empirical formula for them. Pinagiwalay pa rin natin yung dalawang carbons. And then these are their boiling points. And if you notice, we start from negative 162 until it, stand at the, until it becomes a positive value, 36, until 126. You may pause this video if you need more time observing. If you have decided to continue, let us move to the next table. The next table is a table of alkenes. Okay, it starts from ethene. To, and it ends with one hexane. Okay, so ethene has this condensed structural formula. It has these, this phase, uh, same for until uh, one hexane. hexane. I'm so sorry, I was not able to change them. Okay, and so we are actually, you know, we mean uh, this is. And so, and then the boiling point is in Celsius. So it starts from negative 104 to 63. Um, you will understand later, kung bakit siya 1-butane. Okay, so we'll be talking about that uh, later. Okay, so next is a table of alkynes. Okay, so ethyne, propyne, 2-butyne, and, uh, and then uh, pentyne. And so uh, the boiling points are also noted here. You can pause this video. If you need more time, right, if you have decided to continue, let us answer the following questions. Right, first question is What are the types of bonds present in the following alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, let us answer question number two. Hi, right, so using tables 1 to 3, what pattern do you observe in terms of the phase, number of carbon atoms, structure, and boiling point of the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes? Explain the patterns you observe. Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, let us uh, answer question number 3. What do you think will be the boiling point of the next alkane, alkene, and alkyne? Just give me an estimate. So will the boiling point of each hydrocarbon be higher or lower? Explain your answer. Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, let us now answer question number four. What do you think? Why do you think some hydrocarbons are gases and others are liquids? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, let us now, okay, check your, I know, let us answer question number five. I'm so sorry, I'm quite excited. Right, so why do you think are there many hydrocarbon compounds? Bakit ang dami kaya nila? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, Let's answer question number six. What hydrocarbon compounds are why what hydrocarbon compounds are gases and liquids? Now what are the uses of gaseous hydrocarbon compounds and liquid hydrocarbon compounds? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, let us move on to checking your own work. Okay, so the answer to question number one is, compounds in alkanes uh, group only have single bonds between carbon atoms, whereas in alkenes, merong mga double bonds between carbon atoms. And then alkanes, they have at least one triple bond between carbon atoms in the compounds. So one, one single bond, I mean, for alkanes, single bonds, for alkenes, double bonds, and for alkynes, at least one triple bond. Let us now move to question number, the answer to question number two. The physical state of the alkanes from methane to butane is gas and from pentane to octane, liquid. The reason for this is related to the structure of the compounds. If the molecule of the compound is small, malilang yung molecule, it interacts less with each other. Just like methane, it is likely to be gaseous compound. 
to be a gaseous compound. When the molecules become bigger in size or structure, they can look closely interact with each other and they be will become more likely to be liquid, just like in the case of octane. Since mas maliliit yung ibang mga molecules of uh, hydrocarbons, um, there is less interaction between the atoms, so mas nagiging loose sila, making them gaseous. When uh, kapag mas malaki sila, say for instance octane with eight um, carbon atoms, they there's a high tendency for these carbon atoms to interact closely, making them stay liquid. Octane molecules has a very has very long structure that makes it too heavy to become a gaseous compound. The trend the trend in the face of compounds is also the same with alkenes and alkynes. So not just in alkanes, but also in alkenes and alkynes. Na kapag alimbawa mas lumalaki yung compound, mas nagiging uh, closer interaction ng mga carbon atoms niya at mas nagiistay siya sa pagiging liquid niya. The phase of alkenes and alkynes is a gas where the molecules are small and becomes liquid as the molecules become bigger. The trend in the structures of the compounds in alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes is the same. The size of the structures of the compounds is, is increasing because the compounds become bigger or longer. So I would like you to keep that in mind. If you want to, uh, to take note of it again, you can just repeat what I said. But now let us move on to question. To the answer to question number three. Okay, the trend in the boiling point of the compounds in alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes are also in increasing pattern. So, the positive mu that starts with a super negative until super positive. This is because of their structures. As the structures of the compounds become bigger, they also interact more with each other. Same reason. Bigger molecules can, with that, interact with each other more strongly require higher temperature para mag-evaporate sila since there is a closer interaction sa mga bigger, bigger molecules compared dun sa mga smaller molecules, mas nangangailangan din sila ng mas matataas na temperatures para mag-evaporate sila. That's why they have higher boiling points. So kapag mas maliit yung uh, molecule, there is also less interaction between carbon atoms, they are more loose, they will have lower boiling points. Alright, let's now move on to question number to the answer to question number four. The reason why there are hydrocarbons that are gases and liquids is because of the structure or the size of the molecules of the compounds, as it was said in the previous answers. When the molecules are small, they tend to interact less with each among each other, as it was said also. Smaller molecules are all usually gases, and when molecules have bigger structures, they interact more with each other. Thus, bigger molecules tend to settle in liquid state. So I hope that uh, there is no uh, need for further iteration. Okay, so let's now proceed with question, the answer to question number five. The reason for so many hydrocarbon compounds is the carbon atom. Carbon has... Uh, Carbon atoms have four valence electrons. This atomic structure of the carbon makes it possible to form many types of bonds with other elements and with other carbon atoms. The formation of these bonds results in many different hydrocarbons. Major reason? It is the number of valence electrons in carbon, which is four. It allows it to have uh, different kinds of bonds with other carbon or with other elements to form hydrocarbons. Okay, so the answer to the last question. Common examples of gaseous hydrocarbons are methane, butane, propene, and ethene or ethyne or acetylene. Uh, methane gas is the most common hydrocarbon. It is used as a fuel for cigarette lighters and LPG. Um, it is also mixed with other fuels for vehicles, but I think um, cigarette lighters are uh, mostly um, fueled by butane. Butane is a gas. Uh, used as a fuel blended with other hydrocarbons, again, to produce LPG. Ethane gas, or commonly known as acetylene, is used commonly in flame torch that is used in welding of iron, and it is also used in hastening, hastening the ripening of fruits. So those are uh, common hydrocarbons and their uses. We're now through with activity number three, the hydrocarbons. Let us now move to... Hi, alcohols and their uses, activity number five. 
The objectives for this um, for this activity are the following. The first one is to recognize the uses of common alcohols and then identify the similarities in the structures of different kinds of alcohols and then relate the similarities to the common properties they have. And so the materials you will be needing are the following, paper and pencil, because I will be providing the illustrations for uh, some, common, uh, no, some common alcohols. And so... Um, we have the first one as family rubbing alcohol. It's seventy percent solution. It's uh, for external external use only. Uh, this is one of my personal favorites because it has moisturizer. <laughs> it's Casino Fem. It's also, it's an ethyl alcohol and it's seventy percent solution. The next one is Biogenic. This is a very fragrant one. I personally use this. It's an isopropyl alcohol, 70% solution. It says it kills 99.9% .9 of uh, germs. And this one is, uh, is Rhea, isopropyl alcohol. It's a 70% solution alcohol. It's antiseptic and disinfectant. So uh, you just have to note the name of the products, the name of alcohol, alcohols present in the product, the percentage or the amount of alcohol in the product and then the uses. Remember that 70% solution refers to 70% um, 70 parts alcohol per 30 parts of water. So I'll give you more time. I'll give you time to finish this table. You can write this on your activity paper or on your notebooks. If you need more time, you can pause this video. If you have decided to continue, let us now uh, move to uh, the following questions. Hi, right, so uh, the common products, what are the common products that contain alcohol? So I think you can answer this question easily with the use of your table. Next question is, why are alcohols important? You can pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, let us move to question number three. What types of bonds are present in ethyl alcohol, methyl alcohol, and isopropyl alcohol? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, let us now move to question number four. What accounts for the similar physical properties of alcohols? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, let us move to um, the, the answers to the question. So again, family rubbing alcohol and then the percentages until rea alcohol. So take note of these. Their uses, they have a common use, disinfection, and, and they are also antiseptic. So for the answer to question numbers one to two, just uh, look at these, okay? The answers are already here. For question number three, the answer is the structure of the alcohols in this activity only have single bonds. So take note of that. They all have single bonds. The answer to question number four is alcohols have the same hydroxyl or that OH group as their functional group. That is why they have some similar properties or characteristics. And so that's for question number four. They have the same hydroxyl group. The next one, question. Okay, so that's for question number four. Time about that's the last question. Yeah, so that's the last question. Right, so we're done with activity number five, uses of common alcohols. And so um, in this session, you were able to do the following. Engage in the discussion about the properties of organic compounds. Second is activity number three, the hydrocarbons, and lastly, activity number five, alcohol and their uses. Again, this is a degree in chemistry, and we're still trying to master this learning competency. This is Sir Carlos, and I hope that I'll be seeing you in the next video. Have a good day.